Amazing Grace was being sung from behind the door and it was more than one voice. It was like, I believe that was a choir of angels singing it. And I felt this energy in my heart literally rippling it was like a current of energy coming out of the heart, rippling out through my entire being. Hello, passionate listeners and watchers. Welcome to Passion Harvest. I am Louisa, your host. Thank you so much for joining us wherever you are in the world right now. I'm so excited about our guest today, Claire Stone. Claire Stone can see and she can hear angels. Claire is a Hay House best-selling author, founder of the Angel Mystery School and psychic development expert at Destiny Magazine. Claire has dedicated over 25 years to helping others to connect with the wisdom of the angels and to align with their soul's higher destiny. She is the author of The Female Archangels and Reclaim Your Powers with the Lost Teachings of the Divine Feminine. This is her story and this is her passion, Claire Stone. Welcome to Passion Harvest. I'm delighted to have you on the show today. Thank you so for inviting me. I'm super excited to be here. Well, I'm so excited you're here and I, the audience certainly loves to hear about angels and I, I do as well. And I know that you can see and you can hear angels. And how long, can I ask how long you've been doing this for? Or I've you've been always, experiencing this, I should say. Yeah, I, I've always had these um, gifts when I was a, a child. It's as far back as, as I can remember, just I've always seen things, heard things, um, had astral projection. I mean, I think everybody does that anyway, but I've always been conscious of it from being, like I'm talking five years old, I can remember coming out of my body, um, communicating with spirit guides and going over to my grandparents and then telling them the next day, oh, I seen you watching this on the TV, I seen you eating that. Um, but unfortunately, they, they were actually scared of it. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. And I, I, you know, often, so often as we grow older, well, when you're not old, but as we mature, we lose our gifts and we sometimes think we're stupid or silly for believing in angels or seeing things. But I love that you honor and embrace that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, this is my this is my passion spirituality I've always had really deep questions I've always believed in God but I didn't necessarily believe with what I'd been taught about the religion I was raised in so I always had very deep questions and I would say God what's the point in life like what is God where were we before we were born so I've always been very very curious um, so this is just everything I do. It, it feels like a hobby. It's just doing what I love. It's your passion. So what do angels look like to you? Well, I always say that just to validate every single person's experience, however an angel appears to you, that, that is perfect. Some people see angels as a flash of light, a spark of light, um, or like a ray of light or you might see an angel in a humanistic form that's how I see angels in a humanistic form um most of the time it is as you see in artwork wings but the more of an energy than like a luminous body of light mm -hmm. rather than physical but I do see angels physically and mentally so mental mediumship is when you see something in your mind's eye yeah. and then physical mediumship is when you physically see a being in front of you. So you see both? Yeah. Yeah. They can come in different ways. Ama and amazing. And does everyone have a guardian angel? Oh yeah, definitely. At least, you know, a couple of guardian angels. So we've been talking for a while before this interview. Have you seen angels around me? <laughs> well what I do is Louisa I try not to open up my psychic senses all the time because 
it can be very overwhelming, quite sensitive. But if I have the intention to do it, then I will do it. So someone's guardian angel will only make an appearance if it's kind of like they really need to yeah. hear something because it's that um, it's imposing on free will, so to speak. So I have it switched off, ready to switch it back on. Because when I was younger, it was always switched on. And it can be um, it can be overwhelming because you can tap into all kinds. You start reading that person, reading their energy. Um, so yeah, I, I keep it switched off. But actually now, I'm not getting your guardian angel, but actually Archangel Michael is coming in around you, um, which might be a bit cliche because everyone loves Archangel Michael. But I think he's coming in because you have got this voice for the world. You're using your throat chakra to spread wisdom and knowledge to help people to heal and to help them to, you know, raise their consciousness. So definitely feel Archangel Michael uh, is is strongly around you helping you with that with that voice of truth amazing and so how do the angels communicate to you is it usually telepathically yeah it's usually telepathically i see a lot in visions and i i hear them mainly in my voice now that might sound a bit weird uh, but i like i'll hear a voice but it's in my voice. Does that make sense? That's because sometimes, see, like, that's clear audience, clear hearing. So just say, for example, I'm not switched on and an angel wants to tell me something and I hear it in another voice. That can, sometimes it could be a bit, like, startling, like, oh, who just said that? Yeah. Yeah. But if it's in your voice, it's always very, um, it's easier to receive and I think that's one of the big reasons why a lot of people don't realize that they're receiving messages from the guardian angels because the guardian angels so subtle, they want to deliver these messages of wisdom and inspiration to you, but in a delicate way that's not going to frighten you. So a lot of the time you think you're thinking it, but actually an angel has popped that in the I, I, yeah, that, I love that. I'm, I'm so excited and, I mean, I'm, I'm passionate about this subject as well. Um, what does an angel feel like? I guess it it's also must be a feeling experience. Yeah. Angels feel incredibly peaceful. I f when an angel's coming in, I tend to feel warm. I feel a lot of heat physically in the body. Um, sometimes if I've not kind of seen them first but I felt them first I can get uh, goosebumps especially if I'm saying something profound um something like really interesting they just it just feels like pure peace and love the most intense feeling I've ever had was um one night when I was I must have been about 20 because I remember where I lived at the time and I was experiencing a lot of astral projection. I was waking up in the night, just floating around the bedroom. But like I said earlier, because of my religious upbringing and um, my grandparents saying, oh, you shouldn't be doing that. Um, I came a little bit scared of it for, for a while. So I, somebody told me, if you think of your big toe, you will wake up, you'll be mm -hmm. back in the body. So I've been using this method of I'm floating around and then I think oh, I want to come back. See, when I was five years old, I loved it. But because I was starting to be conditioned that it was evil and something wrong with me, um, you'll get possessed if you, <laughs> yeah. all that, you know, that negative um, stuff was laid over me. So I thought, right, I want to know why I am like coming out my body every night. And I didn't have anybody, any, any physical person to tell me what was going on so I decided to stay present so this night I come out the body I realized I was out and then I've been there for a while and I said god what's the point in this I'm actually bored just floating around I may as well go back to sleep and underneath the door this light came through and I could hear the hymn, this is the only time I've ever heard singing like this that I can remember. 
Amazing Grace was being sung from behind the door. And it was more than one voice. It was like, I believe that was a choir of angels singing it. And I felt this energy in my heart literally rippling. It was like a current of energy coming out of the heart, rippling out through my entire being. Now, at that point, I'm not in my physical body. I'm in my energy body. But that was so powerful. I felt more physical and solid than in this, if that can make any sense to you. But it was so overwhelming it's overwhelmingly beautiful. Yeah. It was a beautiful experience. And the next day, I'd bought this CD. I'd been to a concert, was only young, and I didn't know the songs on the album. And an angel said in my voice, put number seven on. So I put track seven on, driving to work, and the song is, was called Sinny Sin Sins by Roots Maneuver, and halfway through the song, he says, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. So, you know, the angels always confirm things for you if you're open, if you're open to it. Actually, I have felt another experience of an angel as well, which I forgot about, but they're reminding me now. Um, early in 2020, my mum passed away, and it was really... This is really paradoxical because me and my sisters were sat in the hospital absolutely devastated. But at the same time, I could feel my heart being held. I felt the most intense, powerful love. I cannot describe it that I've ever, ever felt when, when my mum was dying in hospital. Angels were holding my heart. And they're the two things that stand out about what angels feel like. They can feel very subtle. You might not notice that they're there. But if you quiet your mind and you can make space, because our emotions, you know, we're feeling so much all the time. We have busy minds. We can miss them. But if we can quiet that down, then we can feel the subtleness, the peace. We can ask the angels, thank you for filling me with your peace. Thank you. If we ask for it, we will receive it. So when we, if we pray or we, we talk to the angels, they do hear us. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I am just want to say this question. People often say, well, I pray, but, you know, my, no one seems to be hearing me or I'm not achieving what I want. Why? I mean, that's a hard question to answer. Do, is it just our life path that? I think I always say that you have to meet the universe halfway. So say if you wanted a new job and you just sat there, come on universe or come on angels, bring me a new job, but you're not applying for a new job and you're mm -hmm. not putting yourself out there, then it's not going to manifest, is it? So there's this level of, I think you've got to meet the angels halfway. And if you put the effort in, I do think when it's the perfect time for you, then it will come about. I'm a true believer. I mean, my house is currently for sale. And a couple of weeks ago, it was sold. Now it's back on the market because the chains collapsed. And this doesn't bother me in the slightest. Somebody said to me yesterday, you must be so frustrated. Actually, I'm not. Because <laughs> I truly believe that now I'm going to move at a later time. It's going to happen. But I'm going to find a more perfect home. I truly believe in that, of the divine orchestrating, because I am open to that. I say, thank you. I know what comes to me is for the best for me. I'm open to that and I trust that. And I'll do my best to put myself out there. However, there are some things that we cannot change. So when things don't happen, it might be because, you know, I, get a, I hear a lot of stories of people who want to, uh, they want a miracle for their child um, or a partner or somebody else. A lot of people are always praying for somebody else, mm -hmm. but a lot of the time it's, they need to do that for themselves and they have their own free will and their own path. And of course we can pray for them and give them support, but we can't always change other people's paths either because that's the opportunity for their own soul's growth. 
completely agree. And I'm just backtracking on what you were talking about, how you believe everything is in divine timing. And I've found in the last few years when you have, a, a, you can call it many words, but absolutely faith in the divine, how life seems to just flow more and everything seems to fit into place at the perfect timing. Like your house sale, it, 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 things don't matter as much anymore because you know you're being guided yeah, and you could actually be being protected mm. as well. I also see it as that, um, you know, if we make plans to go somewhere and and something happens and we can't go, then I think, oh, maybe I'm being protected from um, something that could have happened if I'd have gone there. So I try and see things in a more positive, in the most positive way, because overall life is more joyful if you choose to see the glass half full. Absolutely agree. I have to ask you, what? how do you see the difference between angels and spirit guides? They're, to me, they are totally different okay. because they're on a different vibrational level. So spirit guides have had human lives like mm -hmm. us. Um, so the energy is totally different. Angels don't have egos spirit can now spirit guides are i i believe that we have a spirit guide who's more spiritually evolved than us because otherwise how could they really serve us to our best they've got to be more spiritually uh, aware than us haven't they mm -hmm. um, but but our ancestors and spirit family like us we, we have egos they get upset if you're upset and we're angels, it's different. So they, they feel totally different and you get to feel the personalities. Um, each angel feels different. You, you can feel who that is, who's coming in by how they feel. So like if Archangel Michael comes in, you can just feel this confidence and safety. Um, but then if Uriel comes in, then I start feeling creative and getting ideas and feeling upbeat because he's got like this fiery, passionate and it's a total different feel of energy. Um, I mean, I'm well into energy and feeling energy. I come from 20 years of martial arts, harmonious martial arts, and it's always feeling the energy of everything. And that's really helped my development as well. I mean, I'm still learning. We're all still learning new things every day. That's why this mm -hmm. is so exciting. But yeah, they, they feel totally different to me. When it's spirit, it feels like a person. And when it's an angel, it's got that aspect of holiness. And I'm not saying that spirit guides are not holy because mm -hmm. they are and I love my spirit guides they're amazing but you can have a bit of a laugh with your spirit guides as well because one of my guides Helena she is really funny and she'll make things happen in a really funny way because she's got that human personality great way of explaining it and I just want to clarify so the angels have not had a human incarnation I don't believe they have. Some people say that, and I respect what every person says. I'm not trying to put my beliefs on anybody else, but I think that angels, I, this is the way I see it in a nutshell, that there's this source of creation, this holy source of creation that branches off like a tree, and then these branches are expressions of the divine, so masculine, feminine, angels, and then they just keep little leaves coming off the branches of different expressions I think that we are on our way up um and I but I think that the angels were created in the beginning even though there's no such thing as linear time to hold everything together that that's what I think angels are I think they're the first like individual expressions of God universe divine whatever you want to call it that's how I see them I don't see them as human. You just mentioned one of my favourite subjects and that's linear time. <laughs> <laughs> Aside from angels and spirit guides, do you see everything happening in the eternal now? When you just said that time's not linear as there is no beginning and there is no end, is that what you're referring to? Or there's no, so the future's already occurred? Yeah. I think that you can travel to the future. I know you can go into the past, so why can't you go into the future? 
totally believe it. I, I am so open-minded. I'm really woo-woo. I believe that anything is possible. Well, you're like, on the perfect show, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Um, yeah, definitely. I think that everything's happening at the same time, but me experiencing it on individual time. I think that everything's paradoxical because ultimately I do believe that we are one as well as individual. So like we have our body, mm -hmm. which has got all these cells in it. And, but we are one, even though we have these individual experiences. I mean, time is a fascinating topic, at, but I think that there's ultimate, there's also unlimited possible outcomes as well. Yes, multiple timelines. Yes, yes. And have you found it interesting now? Did have you felt there's been like timeline shifts? I do, but I also believe that our consciousness creates our reality so i it's yeah. also maybe to the individual well some people call it an individual unit of conscious it's just an individual yeah soul. It, it, everyone's but your perception is different than mine yeah yeah i think though as a, as like a as collective a reader as a psychic reader i've like looked at things and how things are say like 20 years ago something would have unfolded a lot slower than it's unfolding now. It's like everything's speeding up. And I think potentially that could be because there's so many people become conscious on the planet and we're conscious that we are, we are influencing, we are creating our reality. So therefore, we, we can, nothing's set in stone. But I find that really interesting where I, I think like about 20 years ago, it, things kind of were slower to manifest than they are now. Or maybe that's just me, because yeah. I didn't know how to manifest. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's really interesting. I think when you come more into your power, which obviously you're a completely different version of yourself than you were 20 years ago, you yeah. hold a lot more capability to manifest things quicker as well. Yeah, Possibly. true. Yeah, yeah. I'm quite confident. Like, I don't mean this in an egotistical way, but I've manifest the last few years everything that I wanted. It, it's pretty easy to manifest these days. Oh my God. Well, I'm going to have to ask you, what, what, do you have a special <laughs> technique for manifesting? <laughs> well, I started off with all the usual things like reading all the books about the law of attraction. Right. I'm really into feng shui as well because I'm into energy. Mm -hmm. um, but I have just got total faith now because I've experienced a few miracles, what I class as miracles, and they have given me the confidence to think. And again, it's not always on my timing. There's something that I just manifest, which I can't reveal yet, sorry. Okay. Um, literally days ago and I I wanted this 18 months ago and I got told no at first and now it's been that I've been asked for it so ultimately I've got what I wanted but I, I got no at first so I got turned away so I think that if you just totally believe with everything and you just continue progressing forward I, I just think that you can literally manifest any opportunity whether that's career or I mean my, my stuff has made what I've been manifesting is career because I've kind I've got my family and my marriage and everything's all settled so that was um the only thing you know I wanted to write the book um but if you want a little example of a miracle of what got me like super manifesting well confident that I could that I can manifest was um it must have been about eight years ago. Oh, all right. And Helen is saying um, the reminder that I did a lot of work on self-worth yeah. so that I could receive it because I didn't believe you deserve it. Yeah. Yeah. Because I had this um, low like uh, self-worth thing, which I didn't know about until I delved deep thought I'd done with all that. Um, but I got my daughter these boots they were 
these hot pink boots they were so nice with turquoise balls and i couldn't afford them at all money was really really tight we just lost a business and like i couldn't afford them but anyway they were in the sale in the shop and they were a size too big and but i just had to have them for my little girl and i thought i'll buy them and i'll put them in the wardrobe for winter so i buy these boots put them away forget about it months later i think that might have been january and then we get to september something like that i pull the boots out proud as anything like oh my little girl with these boots put them on and they're both the left foot oh no so i was like oh no i was gutted so i thought right i'll phone the shop and maybe they've got the other um shoes like anyway this shop had gone bust mm. <laughs> So I couldn't uh, get them. So I, I phoned the manufacturer because this is a big company. And I thought, right, I'll phone them and just see. They might say, oh, well, we'll send them to us. So I phoned them and they said, they were limited edition boots. There's no way, um, there's nothing we can do. There's no way you're going to get a pair of them boots now. So I felt a bit deflated. But then angels were around and said, it's going to be okay. So I didn't know what they meant by that, but I knew it was going to be okay. I left it. And then a few weeks later, an angel said, go on eBay and look for the boots. And I thought, there's no way these boots in the right size are going to be on eBay. But I thought, I'll humor you and look. Mm -hmm. So I look, and lo and behold, there's a pair of boots, the same size. There was something like a, a baby size eight. They were small shoes so i'm in a little bit of poverty consciousness at this point and i'm thinking i've been ripped off here why should i have to buy these boots again um i can't afford them i couldn't afford them the first time and they're just like just trust buy the boots so i bought the boots they turned up i don't know a week later they're both the right foot <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> the phone number of the seller, which isn't usually, doesn't usually come, you can normally just contact them through eBay, through mm -hmm. an email, but they put the phone number in the parcel. So I phoned this person, it was a man in London. I said, look, you've just sent me these boots and they are, they're both the right foot. And he said, oh, I said, but you're not going to believe this. I said, I have got the exact same boots. I bought them in January and they're both the left foot. Oh, my gosh. I said, so what if I send you uh, one of my boots? I'll pay the postage back. You give me a refund and then we've both got a pair of boots. And he couldn't believe it. Like, he did believe it, but he was like, this is so weird. He said, can I ask you? Now, bear in mind, this guy's in London and I'm up north. He said, can I ask where you got the boots from? And I told him the name of the shop and he had bought them from the exact same shop as me. He bought stock from companies that went into liquidation or whatever and then resold it. So he'd had these boots for God knows how many months, same as me. And at the same time, he puts them on eBay and I search. That is a miracle. I know it's just a pair of boots. It is. When that happened, my confidence in manifesting went through the roof because I thought if I can manifest that, I can manifest anything. And I truly believed it. And that's what took me to the next level. And I don't mean to be arrogant with that. Like I'm not a millionaire. I don't. I don't want loads of money or anything, but if, if there's something that I think, oh, I'd like to have that opportunity or I'd like to go there, it tends to, it, it manifests for me. Yes. I, I also just want to say that that connection with this man in London and the shoes really also relates to how we are all one and everything is complete. We're all interconnected, really. Yeah. Because what are, I mean, what are the odds that it's, I call it, I, I, I see it like a spider web of connection of energies and we are all one. But also with the manifesting, I find from my personal experience that 
you have to be really excited about it as well. It has, you have to be in a high vibration and I also feel it in my heart as well. Yeah. And I'm a very visual person. So I visualize almost like me in a movie of what it would be like. That's what works for me as well. Yeah, I do exactly the same. I, I act as if it's already manifest. So before I got the book deal with Hay House, my husband went to, there's a chocolate shop in the UK called Thornton's and you can buy these chocolate bottles and you can get them personalised. And he got one personalised for me saying, congrats on your first book deal. And I put that on Instagram and I didn't even have a book deal, but I knew I was going to oh. get, I was using the law of attraction, putting it out there. So it's just these little things. And especially if there's someone around you who can encourage you a bit more, then it makes it even more powerful as well, doesn't it? It does. And it's almost like you're aligning with that timeline version of you. Yeah, yeah definitely. That's great. And you all, you also have a workshop, don't you? Is it called the law of, what's your abundance, your abundance workshop? Oh, I've got loads of workshops. Okay, you've got loads of workshops. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do uh, law of attraction workshops. I do a lot of manifesting. I like manifesting with a ritual because I feel, so I'm by a ritual. I just mean like I might get a white candle and say if I wanted to feel a bit more peace in my life, I might write the word peace on it with um, engrave it with a knife or something or say if I, I wanted some money I might get a green candle and write abundance on it so nothing like too elaborate but I like actually physically doing something because I feel like I'm drawing I'm pulling energy in and then I'm, I'm pulling back the arrow and I've got I'm sending out an intention so I do a lot of online manifesting rituals so I might call it a candle manifesting with candle magic or but it's 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 setting your intention out and then I feel that's a really good way so I, I do a lot of things like that because I feel like it builds energy and ultimately people who participate in these workshops they believe it and there's nothing more powerful than your own beliefs yes so if they think I'm going to do this candle magic and gonna manifest this. I always ask people, let me know when you when your wish has come true. And then if they allow me to share it, because we have a, a little group. I've got an angel school, it's called the Angel Mystery School. And I was gonna ask sure. you about that. So you're <laughs> you're answering my questions. This always happens on the show. So <laughs> yeah. please go ahead because that was one of my questions. The Angel yeah. Mystery School. So the Angel Mystery School is all different types of accredited courses. Um, so I teach people there's angel communication so if you would like to learn to communicate with angels I've got a course there shows you different ways so whether that's using cards or channel writing there's all different met methods or even just asking for a sign um, and then I've got a, a 13 month program 13 is the divine feminine number so that's why I have 13 months because of 13 full moons in a year all that feminine mm. number um and that's called archangel alchemy so we work with an, a different angel each month um so and, and then we work with a theme so this month we're working with haniel and haniel trap Channel is a divine feminine angel, so brings in the qualities of the feminine, which is receptivity, intuition, going with the flow. Um, and so her name translates to grace of the goddess, and she's the angel of the moon, uh, lucid dreaming. So our topic this month is lucid dreaming. So I've they all everyone in the group. We're going to have a live on Monday. We have a live masterclass and then they have the video lesson. So the studying, they're working with that angel all month um, and learning to lucid dream. Um, so, yeah, that's the Archangel Alchemy. So it's just creating the life that you want, being the best version of you with the assistance and the wisdom teachings of the angels Amazing. You're a busy lady. And can I just ask for the audience, what are your tips or top tips to connect with their guides or angels that you well, recommend? 
I recommend that if you're starting from the beginning, if you don't hear or see angels, if you feel like you're not in tune, then I always say to people, get it's really good to get a deck of angel cards or oracle cards. And then in the morning, I do a meditation every morning. Sometimes I do it in bed, <laughs> just sit up in bed before I even get out of bed, if it's warm and cozy. <laughs> um, if you get into the habit of perhaps lighting a candle, putting your psychic protection on or calling in that divine energy to fill you with light, to bless your day, and then say, angels, what do you want me to know about today? And then pick a card and then see what the card is. And then go about your day with the card in mind and then see how that has unfolded at the end of the day. And then start incorporating angels into everything that you do. So as soon as I get in my car, I say, thank you, angels, for protecting me, keeping me safe on the road. My kids are going to school. Thank you for keeping my children healthy and safe today. Like everything I'm doing when I'm cooking, I'm thank you for this delicious food. Thank you that it nourishes our bodies. When the food is on the conveyor belt in the supermarket, I am saying thank you. I'm so grateful. I'm even grateful to the people who grew the food, who packed the food, who put it on the shelves. And I, I'm just, I try and be in a state of gratitude all the time. And of course, we all have struggles in life. That's the yeah. whole point of it all. But if you have these tools to look at things in the best way then it helps you to feel good so i've gone on a tangent but no you're like a living prayer it's fabulous but i just <laughs> have to say to you and to the audience that another wonderful way to manifest is to be grateful even though you actually don't see it at the time it's as it's happened you're believing it's happened so grateful for the food even though the food might not be ready yet yeah Definitely, definitely. Now, I think it's really important. I always say to people that to give the angels an invitation, they're not necessarily going to jump in and know, hi, nice to meet you. But if you, if you invite the angels in and say, right, angels. In fact, I was on TV in the UK just before Christmas and I did what was called the angel experiment. That's what I called it. And I said to the viewers, because this is like daytime TV, this isn't like your show and people are into it. <laughs> I said, look, why don't you just do an experiment then and just see and ask angel, if you are really there, if I really have a guardian angel, then please send me a sign this week. And then I got everyone watching to set an intention. So it could be, show me a purple feather or show me an elephant or something that you wouldn't necessarily see um, in your normal day. Mm -hmm. Now, I hadn't even got out of the studio and one of the camera crew said, I asked for a teapot, is that weird? And as she said it, someone comes walking into the studio they, with a tray and it was just before Christmas and they bought a teapot that looked like a Christmas pudding and they were mm -hmm. coming in with this teapot not something that they normally do because it was a Christmas pudding so I tapped on the shoulder and I said look and she was like oh her That's mum messaged me because she thought she couldn't believe it they're all messaging me on Instagram after it <laughs> I get out of the studio and my phone is just ping, ping, ping. People who've been watching, I'd ask for something. One person has to see an orange Mini Cooper. Like that's that's rare. And they seen one straight away, took a photo, sent it to me on Instagram. I don't know these people. And then someone, someone, someone did ask for an elephant and apparently the advert after the show, it was, top, it was about elephants So a lot of people got the confirmation and they weren't necessarily believers. They don't physically see, they don't hear, but you've got to get the communication going. And then once you keep up with it, then it will blossom. I can guarantee that it will blossom if you keep giving angels the invitation. Thank you for helping me, angels. And you can ask them for, for anything, for practical things, because your guardian angel is just for you. 
So some people think, oh, angels can be, they're too busy for me. No, your guardian angels, they're for you. Because the easier your life is, the more that you, you wake up into your spirituality, then you're helping the whole planet anyway. So you're doing your bit by doing your inner work and asking for that guidance. You are, you're not taking anything away from anybody. You're increasing the light. That's great. And you can also ask the angels for healing as well. Yeah. 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 When I, if, if I'm ever feeling a bit under the weather, um, I will ask angels for healing. And I, and I visualize it as well. I visualize, I slow my breath right down and I visualize breathing in emerald green and golden light. That's how I see healing energy. Mm -hmm. Other people might just like white light or golden light, whatever you want. But I like the emerald because it connects to Archangel Raphael and um, Archaea Murray. Archaea is the feminine term for Archangel. And we have not been, sub we don't know a lot about the feminine aspect of the angels because we've been raised in these patriarchal societies. Mm -hmm. So that, that's what I brought about in the book, how to do things in a feminine way, because, you know, my belief again is to become a whole human being to attain spiritual enlightenment, which I think every single one of us has come here to do whether it's in this lifetime or the next. To me, you've got to activate those masculine and feminine energies, the yin and yang. And, and I feel like we have only been given a half truth so that those in power, you know, we won't need them if we're whole human beings, would we? If we're using our masculine when we need to, you know, masculine is the ability to have boundaries, say no, to take action. And then your feminine is like realizing, no, oh, I'm tired, I'm going to rest. Or I'm going to nurture myself or I'm going to nurture somebody. So those qualities, those opposite energies, in my belief, is what makes us whole. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. I just have to ask you, you talked about in the morning you ask for protection do you mind just sharing your method of protecting yourself in the morning yeah so i always imagine an an orb of light around me now i do it slightly different when i'm doing psychic work and i'll quickly tell you through them both but in the morning i imagine like a coating around my aura and i also imagine a white cross or an ankh in every direction, in front, behind, to the right, to the left, above and below. I extend that light around my house and I put the crosses. You can use any symbol that is holy to you. Um, I like the Christ light. That's how I perceive the cross as Christ light, which is... Um, isn't Christian to, doesn't translate to Christian as me. It's the Christ mind, the Buddha mind. Mm -hmm. But if I was doing a psychic reading or connecting to angels, I would do it slightly different. And this is what I call activating your orb of power. And it's when you expand your inner power from within. So I send mine, usually I extend it from the heart, but your, your power can be anywhere in your body, but I send it out from the heart. And I extend that light out and in, into every, all the space around me. Um, and when I'm doing that, I feel like I am totally connected to my higher self so that everything that comes through me is coming from this place of love, the highest place that I can attain and not through my ego mind my analytical because we can't help it we're so curious we're always analyzing everything um but you know when you're reading like that then you, you try not to influence it with your own past your own beliefs you've just got to let it come out so that's why i do it through what i call an orb of power and again i put symbols on it and if i am hosting an event i will call in angels of the directions 
Um, the traditional way is, um, so you're calling Michael, Uriel, Gabriel, and Raziel, but I bring the feminine angels in as well. So if when I'm calling in the angels of the East, the elements of earth, it'll be the opposite to you because you're in a different hemisphere. Okay. Um, I won't just bring in Michael, I'll bring in Faith as well. And I'll thank those angels for bringing in the protection and, and for bringing in that faith that I am protected. And then when we go to the South and we're bringing in the power of fire, it's Archangel Uriel and it's Archaea Aurora. And the difference is, so Archangel Uriel, he is that, he is the light of God and helps you to see things clearly, lights up the pathway when you're a bit uncertain. But Aurora, she helps you to rise from the ashes. So when, like, you know, you're going through massive changes and you think, oh God, how am I going to get through this? Call in Aurora and she, like, she is that light. Uh, she's like the phoenix. So I bring that into every direction and I bring in all guardian angels of everybody who's taking part and helpful spirit guides, high vibrational spirit guides <laughs> that they get invited in as well. Not I'm, necessarily family members. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, no, I'm just thinking I'm going to have to replay this because this is such value, valuable information. I love oh, it. I'm, Thank you so much for sharing that. I'm just going to backtrack. You said when you were, you ask yourself universal truths and questions and you mentioned why are we here? Why do you think we're here? I think that we have been here for so long that we are entertaining ourselves, exploring. That's what I think because... I I feel that the I truly believe that there's a spark, a holy spark of the divine in every single person. And I think that this is just an expression, an exploration, how like a cell will divide. I think we are one of those cells that's divided from this source, this goddess head, godhead, whatever. And I just think we're here to experience to have fun yeah and you can't there's a, there was a, a saying I read this when I was a teenager so I can't remember what book it was from but it was kind of saying that you can't experience the sun if you've never experienced the dark so if you've not experienced the night how can you know what the day is you can't you need that paradox and I think that's what our suffering does. It helps us, it gives us the contrast to experience the love of life and the joy of life. Because otherwise, if it was Christmas every day, it would soon get boring. Yeah, it sounds great. But after a few days, I think we'd get bored. Yeah, well, I think that's how life is. And I might be totally wrong, but... That's what I believe. Oh, that's and your truth, and that's wonderful. That, yeah, and, and I'm I'm a really happy person. Um, I actually said, and I, and I feel this is a really good place to be. I said to my husband, "If I die tomorrow, I'm content. I have done everything I wanted to do. Of course, I've still got aspirations. Yeah. I'm Sagittarius, <laughs> okay. but I truly, I truly have done everything, and and I encourage everybody." to do to at least try don't get to be 80 years old thinking i wish or what if even if it fails just try it anyway and i always ask people if people say oh i always wanted to do this i say does it feel like it's destiny and they often say yeah and i say well if it's destiny how could it fail it can't fail if it's destiny yeah I just thought, my gosh, you could be the blonde version of me. We almost say the same <laughs> things. <laughs> I 100% agree. So I have to say I've asked all the questions of Claire Stone. It's been such a delight. Is there anything you'd like to share with the Passion Harvest audience? Um, I think I would like to just open my book on a random page and see what comes out. Yes, please. So well, this is the book, The Female Archangels. That's the Venus Rose, the Venus Pentagram. 
sacred geometry of the planet Venus, the planet of love and the feminine. Ah, <laughs> so we've opened it on Archaea Faith, which is the feminine aspect of Archangel Michael, who is strongly around you. And it's talking about these angels. Um, this is about psychic protection, the angel of self-defense. So I think that this is saying to everybody, um, and in here, it, this is what's caught my eye. So long as you've made an agreement with the angels, they will head, they will step in and intervene. They've got your back. So remember, we're talking about offering that invitation and we spoke about psychic protection. So anyone who's watching, I think you can get complacent. And I have done this in the past. We are on the spiritual path for a long time. And then you sometimes get a little bit, I call it sloppy, where you think I'm going to pull a card, but you've not put your protection on. I think it's important to always do that, to always have a high vibration. Um, so I think that's protection. And this is saying the, the about the sword and I was saying to you about the sword of truth so it's important for everybody you all I believe everybody has a divine mission and it doesn't mean you have to save the world or be famous or you know something huge it could be just whatever you're doing whether you're a mother doing a fantastic job raising your children whatever you feel what brings you the most joy that is your truth and it's important to do that and just to be happy and to fully express yourself and embrace what you would love to do. What a beautiful way to end the show. I feel like applauding. <laughs> Yay. Um, all your, all Claire's details will be in the show notes, but Claire, where is the best place for people to find you and connect with you? Either on my website, um, clairestone.co.uk, or I've got a Facebook page and an Instagram page. So you can catch me on all of them. Um, but on Facebook and Instagram, I'm, I'm posting stuff every day. So if you want to see um, my posts and things like that, then head over there. Fantastic. Claystone, thank you so much for being on Passion Harvest. It's been such a delight to have you on the show. And I can't wait to listen to this again. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute honour to have this incredible conversation. <laughs> Thanks so much, Claire. Bye-bye. If you like this episode, please do subscribe for weekly passionate, inspirational interviews.